The doctrine of God's omnipresence implies that every point in space is equally here for God. On that doctrine, God is present to all places and to all persons. But what is it for God to be present? What is it for human persons to have God present to them? And what does presentness consist in? Biblical stories portray God as personally present to human beings in the way in which one human person is present to another, but in an especially powerful way. In Genesis, for example, Abraham hears God calling his name, and Abraham responds with instant recognition of God. Abraham knows God when God calls, and God is present to Abraham then. When Rebecca is perplexed by what is happening in her womb, the text says that Rebecca went to inquire of God. She found God present to her when she turned to God, and that is why she asked God the question that was troubling her. In these and many other biblical stories, there is a strong connection of some sort between God and a human person who finds God personally present to him. The ultimate expression in the Old Testament of a human being's experiencing God as present to him in this way is found in one of Job's last lines to God, when Job tells God, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my own eye has seen you. Job not only experiences something he describes as seeing God, but Job acknowledges that experience in terms of second personal address to God. Job says you to God. God's personal presence to Job is what Job is trying to express. Biblical stories then portray God as able to be known directly and immediately by human beings and as able to be personally present to them. This portrayal is in sharp contrast to the theological picture sometimes thought to be entailed by the doctrines of divine eternity and divine simplicity. In fact, some philosophers and some theologians have rejected these doctrines basic in the medieval Christian tradition, just because they suppose that these doctrines undermine or overturn the biblical portrayal of God's relations with human beings. If God is eternal, and so timeless, then in the view of the objectors to the doctrine of God's eternity, God cannot be present to human beings because human beings are in time. And if God is simple, then in the view of the objectors to the doctrine of God's simplicity, God is unknowable by human beings. And because God is incomprehensible to human knowledge, God cannot be personally present to human beings either. One major reason for the rejection of the doctrines of eternity and simplicity on the part of some philosophers and theologians is therefore that they take these doctrines to imply a religiously pernicious disconnection between God and human beings. In this lecture, I will argue that these doctrines have no such implication. I will begin by looking carefully at what it is for persons to be present to one another. Then I will consider and argue against an attempt to show that the doctrine of divine eternity rules out such personal presence between God and human beings. Next, I will consider the challenge posed by the doctrine of simplicity. I will give reasons for thinking that the doctrine of divine simplicity does not, in fact, entail the agnosticism frequently associated with it. I will also argue, however, that there is another kind of knowledge of God which is compatible with the doctrine of simplicity, even if, contrary to my arguments, that doctrine did imply a kind of agnosticism about God's nature. 
In my view, this alternative kind of knowledge of God is sufficient for God's being personally present to human beings in the way the biblical stories describe. Finally, I will show that Thomas Aquinas, one of the main medieval proponents of the doctrines of divine eternity and divine simplicity, Thomas Aquinas recognizes this alternative kind of knowledge of God and supposes it is available to all Christians in this life. For all these reasons, I will claim, neither the doctrine of eternity nor the doctrine of simplicity rules out God's being personally present to human beings. 